If x is a binomial distribution with n trials and probability of success p, then we could make a table, because it's a discrete random variable, we could make a table of all the possible outcomes, all the possible successes, no success, one success, two success, all the way up to n successes, and we could fill in their individual probabilities, and each probability would be of the form n choose x, p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. Then if we want to calculate the mean, we do the same as we do in discrete random variables from S1, do this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, all the way across to here. So that's what we're going to do. It's going to go a little bit messy, but bear with me. It works out all right. And then we're going to prove that the mean of the binomial distribution is n times p. Okay, let's put that up there. And hope I can control the mess that's about to happen. Okay, the mean. Well, the first x is 0, so when you multiply it by its probability, it just gets 0, so we won't bother with that. The next one is 1, and its probability is n choose 1, p to the 1, 1 minus p to the n minus 1. Then we've got the next one, 2, and its probability is n choose 2, p to the 2, 1 minus p to the n minus 2. The next one is 3. n choose 3, p to the 3, 1 minus p to the n minus 3. And then this goes on and on and on. And I'll just write in the last one now. The last one would be when x is n, n successes, they are all 100% successes. And then we've got p to the n, 1 minus p to the n minus n, which is naught. Okay, let's tidy this up a little. Well, actually, this is not going to tidy it up. It's going to make it look worse. But I'm going to just um, add in the actual formula for n choose 1, n choose 2, n choose 3, all the way across. Or oh, I should really have written in there n choose n, but that's 1. Okay, this equals... Okay, 1 is just 1, obviously. n choose 1 is n. p to the 1, 1 minus p to the n minus 1. Plus, now we've got 2 times n choose 2. And n choose 2 is n factorial over 2 factorial, n minus 2 factorial. I'm just using the um, definition that you learned in the binomial expansion in C2. n choose r is defined to be n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial. Okay, then I've got p squared, 1 minus p to the n minus 2, plus 3, and then n choose 3, which is n factorial over 3 factorial, n minus 3 factorial, p cubed, 1 minus p to the n minus 3, plus blah, 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 plus, well, to be honest, this one's all right, isn't it? Um, I can just write this as p, n, p to the n, like that, because... Uh, 1 minus p to the n minus n is 1 minus p to the naught, which is 1. Okay, now what am I going to do? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull out... Actually, I won't pull anything out yet. I'll tidy it up a bit. Because I'm noticing I've got 2 factorial here, 2 here. I've got things I can deal with here. Right. Now, if you have a look at this second term, on the bottom I've got 2 times 1, and on the top I've got 2, so those can cancel. Then, looking at the factorials, on the top, I've got 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up to n. On the bottom, I've got 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up to n minus 2. So the 1 will cancel with the 1, the 2 will cancel with the 2, the 3 will cancel with the 3, all the way up to n minus 2, cancelling with n minus 2. But on the top, there's two extra terms, n and n minus 1. So those ones are going to be left. So I've got np, 1 minus p to the n minus 1, plus n, n minus 1, they're the only bits that didn't cancel from that factorial on the bottom. Now what if I'm going to cancel here? My 3 will cancel with my 3, but it will leave the 2 times 1 on the bottom out of this 2 factorial. The n, the 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way up to n minus 3 will cancel with the 1, 2, 3 all the way up to n minus 3, but it will leave an n minus 2 and an n minus 1 and an n on the top. So on the top, I'll get an n, an n minus 1 and an n minus 2. The n minus 3 all the way down have cancelled. On the bottom, I've got 2 times 1, because that didn't cancel with the 3. p cubed 1 minus p to the n minus 3, plus blah, 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 blah. You could be doing extra terms in there if you like, I just haven't got room. Plus n p to the n. 
Okay, now I am going to pull something out. I'm going to pull out N, P, N and P because every single term has got at least one N and at least one P. All right, so what does that leave me with? 1 minus P to the N minus 1 plus, well, my N has gone and one of my P's has gone. So that leaves me with N minus 1, oops, N minus 1 P, 1 minus P to the N minus 2 plus, okay, what have I taken out here? I've taken out an N and one of these P's. Everything else is still there. So that leaves me with N, N minus 1, N minus 2, no, not N, taking the N out, just N minus 1, N minus 2, over 2 factorial, P squared, because I've taken one of them out, 1 minus P to the N minus 3, plus blah, 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 plus N, uh, oh, I've taken the N out, I keep forgetting that I've taken the N out, and I've taken one of the P's out as well, so that would just be P to the N minus 1. Now, I admit it's not obvious what's happening at this stage, but I'm just going to do a little sneaky trick here. And then hopefully you'll see what's going on. Instead of n minus 1, I'm going to write m. Okay, so here I've got an m, and here I've got an m, and here I've got m minus 1, and here I've got an m, here I've got an m minus 1, here I've got an m minus 2, and here I've got an m. Okay, let's see what that looks like. n, p. 1 minus p to the m plus m, p. 1 minus p to the m minus 1 plus a half, or well, 1 over 2 factorial, m, m minus 1, p squared, 1 minus p to the m minus 2, plus blah, 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 plus p to the m. Now, this here is pretty cool, because what I've got here is m choose 1. And what I've got in there, that number 1, is m choose 0. And what I've got here, a half m, m minus 1, this thing, is m choose 2. And what I've actually got in these big square brackets is a binomial expansion, a C2 binomial expansion of something to the m. And the first thing, the thing that starts off with all of the power is 1 minus p. And the thing that starts with no power but gains the power slowly as you go across each term, bit more power, bit more power, Bit all the power by the time you get to the end, that's a p, that's the thing gaining the power. So this is actually a binomial expansion of 1 minus p plus p all to the m. But 1 minus p plus p, that's just the number 1. So actually, I've got n p 1 to the m, anything 1 times 1 times 1 to any power is just 1, and that leaves us with n p. Okay, and then in the next video, I'll do the proof of the variance.